Hoffman Kodak Company is happy to bring you America's favorite family, the Nelsons. Ozzy, Harriet, David, and Ricky. Like most of us, they like to save their special times in pictures. And summer is a special time, a magic time. Its colors warm, intense in the clean, bright sun, cool and muted in the heavy shadows. Its days are the days we eagerly await each year. Its days are the ones we remember best. All of us, in our different ways, have a special place, a special time we know as summer. Summer lasts all year long, and we can go back to it again and again when we save those special days in pictures on Kodak film. And now Kodak invites you to enjoy The Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet. Plenty to eat here? Yeah, I'm doing fine, thanks. Yeah, it's real great, Ma. Well, that's good to hear. Real great? You have to describe everything as real great? What's the matter with real great? It just isn't specific enough. Could apply to almost anything. Okay, David, we know you're right for the school paper. You know, Dave's right, though. It seems to run in cycles. Everything is described as being fabulous, wonderful, real great. How's the paper coming along, Dave? Do you like writing for it? Oh, yeah, it's fine, Ma. Have they published anything of yours yet? Nothing much, Bob. There's a little thing there on page three. Oh, gee, I'd like to see it. Pardon me. It's not very much. Well, you've got to start someplace. Student body to elect new president. Oh, they've got you covering the political scene, huh? Uh, no, Pop, that's not mine. Mine's a little further down on the page. Alumni dance to be held next month? Uh, no, here, I'll show you. Here, this one. There will be a meeting of the freshman soccer team next Tuesday in room 14. You wrote that? Yeah, what's the matter with it? Read it again. I didn't understand it. Was that your assignment for a whole week? Well, no, I wrote a couple of other things, but that's the only thing that made the paper. What was wrong with the other ones? Were they too short? Okay, bottleneck, finish your pablum. But you do like working on the paper, huh, Dave? Oh, yeah. Of course, it's a lot more work than I thought it was going to be. Well, the first thing a good reporter has to learn to do is get the facts. Yeah, they really impress that on you. Get the facts. Find out who, when, where, how, and why. Speaking of the facts, I'd like to inject a personal touch here, you might say. I need some money. Well, how much? What for? Who are you going to spend it on? Where are you going to spend it? Uh, when do you want it? And why do you need it? <laughs> Thanks, David. <laughs> Oh, excuse me, I have a few calls to make. Okay, dear. Oh, the lunch was real great, Mom. <laughs> now, uh, what's this about you needing some money? I want to buy some new records. A couple of friends of mine are coming over the house tonight, and we want to play some records. I thought you were going over to Georgie Dunkel's house for dinner tonight. I am. See, that's part of the deal. Mrs. Dunkel said we could go over there for dinner if we came back here to play the records. I think I know what she means. <laughs> You have a whole room full of records upstairs. Yeah, but there are a lot of good new ones I don't have, Bob. Yes, I'm sure. Oh, gee, thanks a lot. I'll try and pick out a couple ways you can distinguish the melody, will you? Okay, Bob. Nelson residence? Yes, it is. I have some flowers for Mr. David Nelson. Oh, well, he isn't here right now, but I'll take them. What's this? Flowers, David ordered. Mm. Pardon me, they're COD. What, uh, I'll uh, pay for them, son. How much are they? Six dollars and forty cents. Oh. Here's, uh, seven dollars. I don't think I have any change. Oh, well, that's okay. Keep the change. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I don't get this. Flowers, C-O-D? Oh, they must be for his date tonight. He said something about taking Nancy out to dinner. Taking her out? Why couldn't he bring her over here to dinner? Oh, that doesn't sound like much fun. Well, it'd be a darn sight less expensive, I'll tell you that much. Boy, there's nothing like being a big man at Dad's expense. Flowers, C.O.D., taking a girl out to dinner. These kids think money grows on trees. Well, he hasn't asked you for the money yet. Well, don't worry, he will. Oh, David, your flowers just came. Oh, gee, that's swell, Mom. Yeah, I paid for them. <laughs> oh, 
Well, thanks a lot, Pop. How much were they? Seven dollars, including the tip. Gee. I didn't know they were going to be that much. Sure, everything's expensive nowadays, son. You're not kidding. Oh, here you are, Pop. Seven dollars, including the tip. Oh, gee, thanks, Dave. Uh, your mother tells me you're taking a girl out to dinner tonight. I sure am, Pop, and that's not all. Well, what do you mean? Well, I didn't want to say anything until all the arrangements were set, but I hereby invite you and Mom to be my guests at dinner tonight. Well, I thought you were taking Nancy to dinner. Well, I am, but I'm inviting you and Pop along, too. It's my treat. Oh, gee, that's very nice, Dave. Yes, it is, dear, but I don't think you want your father and me tagging along when you've got a date with a girl. Well, that's the point of it, Mom. This is your party. Well, won't it be kind of expensive? Oh, don't worry about that. I'm taking care of everything. It's about time I treated you and Pop to something. After all, you've been treating me for quite a few years now. Here, Mom, this is for you. Why, thank you, dear. Gee, I guess I should have gotten a flower for your buttonhole, Pop. Oh, no, no, no. That's okay, son. This one's for Nancy. Oh, well, I'll put them in the refrigerator. Thank you very much, dear. These are just lovely. You're welcome. Could you be ready about 7 o'clock, Pop? Oh, yeah, yes. sure. You think so? Okay, so I'll... Oh, by the way, have you ever been to the Zephyr Room? No, we haven't. No? Oh, that's good, because that's where we're going tonight. See you later. Oh, Hi, Oz. Oh, hi, Thorny. Say, when you finish there, you can come over and polish my car if you'd like. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Going on a little trip or something? Uh, no, nothing like that. Harriet and I are going out to dinner tonight, and I always like to drive up in front of a restaurant in a nice, bright, shiny car. You mean you're actually going to loosen up on the purse strings and take Harriet out for a change? Well, it's even more surprising than that. Uh, Dave's invited Harriet and me to be his guest at dinner tonight. Isn't that nice? Yeah, that's real nice. As a matter of fact, my boy Will did the same thing a few weeks ago. He took Catherine and me out and picked up the check. Yeah, how about that? Yeah, it was quite an experience. Did you know there's a hot dog stand in town that serves full course dinners? <laughs> well, the place Dave has taken us sounds pretty nice. I've never been there. It's called the Zephyr Room. The Zephyr Room? Yeah, have you ever been there? No, but I've heard about it. Gee, Oz, that's one of those real swanky places. You know, 75 cents for a cup of coffee, if you drink it black. <laughs> I wonder if Dave realizes what he's getting into. Well, maybe he cashed in some of his savings bonds. I'd better talk to Harriet about this. Maybe we can get the kid to lower his sights a little. Uh, I'll see you a little later, Thorny. Okay, Oz. Oh, if Dave suggests a St. Bernard Terrace, don't go. It's that hot dog stand. <laughs> oh, hi, Pa. Oh, uh, hi, Rick. Is your mother in there? Are you kidding? There's hardly enough room in here for the cookies. I mean, is she in the house? Oh, yeah, she's right in the living room. Oh, thanks. Uh, Rick, uh, have you ever heard of a place called the Zephyr Room? Oh, yeah, a bunch of us guys went up there after a basketball game once. Oh, well, uh, and it wasn't terribly expensive? I don't know. They wouldn't let us in with our sweatshirts on. Are you looking for me? Oh, yeah. Uh, Harriet, uh, I'm a little worried about tonight. I was just talking to Thorny, and he tells me this Zephyr room David has taken us to is just about the most expensive place in town. Oh, dear. Well, gee, it'll cost the poor kid a fortune to take four of us there to dinner. He probably picked it out because he thought it was a, a real nice place. Well, what can we do? Well, uh, I could insist on paying the check. Oh, no, you can't do that. You'd embarrass him terribly. Well, uh, maybe I could talk him into taking us to a more reasonable place. How? Well, uh, I could just say that uh, we can't go to the Zephyr Room. Uh, for one thing, you don't have anything to wear. Your clothes are all so dowdy and, and out of style. <laughs> I, I... <laughs> Hi, Mom, Pop. You know Nancy, of course. Hello, Mrs. Nelson. Hello, Nancy. We just came by to pick up Nancy's corsage. Oh, it's right in the refrigerator, dear, right behind the Brussels sprouts. I think it's wonderful we're all going out to dinner together tonight. Well, thank you. So do we. 
Uh, say, Dave, I was talking to Mr. Thornberry before about this place you're taking us to tonight, uh, the Zephyr Room. The Zephyr Room? Is that where we're going? Oh, gee, Pop, you spoiled it. I was saving it for a surprise. Oh, David, that's wonderful. I hear it's just about the nicest place in town. Well, thank you. Now, here's your corsage. Well, thank you. Gee, I'd better get going. I want to get my hair done and pick out a dress. We'll, we'll see you later. Bye, Mr. and Mrs. Nelson. See you tonight at the Zephyr Room. Ooh! <laughs> Why didn't you say something? Well, what could I say? You saw what happened. I know, I was only kidding. Well, I'll be right back. Hey, well, where are you going? Well, downtown to do some shopping, of course. I can't go to the Zephyr room in those dowdy old clothes I've got. best friend. Make some of man's best pictures. Appealing snapshots, beautiful color slides, lively home movies. Your dog has a personality all his own, so you don't need trick shots or dog show poses. Just watch him quietly, keep your camera ready, and you'll get the kind of picture only you can take. If you can, have a helper who knows your dog. Then, as he talks quietly to your dog, you'll get the kind of alert expression you've been waiting for. A favorite ball or bone is almost sure to bring you an appealing pose like this. And don't forget his friends or acquaintances. And remember, they all look best before a simple background. Of course, you'll want to do as all professionals do and take several shots of every situation. That way, you'll be sure to get pictures you'll enjoy over and over again. And whether you make snapshots, color slides, or home movies, always use dependable Kodak film, the film in the familiar yellow box. Oh, say, you look beautiful, dear. Well, thank you. So do you. <laughs> What time is it? Oh. oh, we have about 15 minutes yet. What's all this money doing on the dresser? Oh, I had the grocery boy cash a check for me. I was afraid David might run short. <laughs> I guess we both had the same idea. I went down and cashed a check, too. Oh, how about that? Hey, you want to put this away someplace? You won't need it. Are you sure you've got enough? Oh, sure. I've got a whole pocket full of money. Would somebody please tie my tie for me? Well, uh, Dave, I didn't know this was formal tonight. Well, I guess you don't have to dress, Pop, but I think most people do. Oh, well, it's all right with me if your mother will hurry. Oh, I can hurry if I don't have to spend all my time looking for your shirt and cufflinks and studs. <laughs> you kidding? Gee, I'm sorry. I guess I should have told you. Oh, that's okay, dear. It'll be fun to get dressed up for a change. Hey, are, Dave. Well, thanks, Pop. I'll phone Nancy and tell her we might be a little late. Oh, hey, where are you going? A new cafeteria down on Main Street? <laughs> I'm going to the Zephyr Room, and I'm treating Mom and Pop. I just hope you have enough money. Let me worry about that. <laughs> Satisfactory, sir? Yes, sir. This is fine. Thank you. Would you care for a cocktail before dinner? Uh, how about it, Mom? Pa? Would you care for a cocktail? Don't mind us. Oh, no, thanks. I don't think so, Dave. No, thank you, dear. I guess not, then. We'll have some champagne a little later on. Very good, sir. I'll return to your order in a moment. Champagne is not a little classy, Dave. I just meant domestic. <laughs> Place, isn't it, Mrs. Nelson? Oh, yes, it certainly is. It's my first time here. Ours, too. I'm well, glad you like it. It's a wonderful orchestra. Oh, everything about the place is wonderful. Just beautiful. I'm well, glad you like it, folks. I just said that, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> David has such a wonderful sense of humor. <laughs> May I take your order, sir? Why don't you order for all of us, David? Yeah, that's a good idea. Dave's the big man tonight, you know. He's picking up the check. Yes, I know. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, what would you suggest, sir? Well, the Pigeonot de Souci Sucrus is very nice, sir. Uh, that's the boneless squab under glass. 
We'll have uh, four of the boneless squabs under glasses then. Would you care for an appetizer? Uh, do you have any of those fruit cups? Oh, yes, sir. We have a very delicious fruit supreme. Is that the one with the chopped oranges and the cherry on top? Yes, sir, it is. We'll have uh, four of the uh, <coughs> supremes. And for a salad, may I suggest the imported Belgian endive with avocado? How's that sound to you, Mom? Oh, fine, dear. Well, we'll have uh, four of the endives in. Uh, do you mind if I keep mine? Uh, not at all, sir. A uh, souvenir? Yes, sir. Kind of. Would you like to dance, Nancy? I'd love to. How about that, Dave, the way he's taking charge of everything tonight? Did you notice the way he ordered the dinner? I thought he did it very well. Yeah, I did, too. Ordering those crepe Suzettes really knocked me out. <laughs> <laughs> I never even knew he'd heard of them. Neither did I. You know, Dave's got a lot of poise for a kid his age. I think his manner is just right, not too forward. He's got a lot of poise. Well, I hope he's got a lot of money with him, because I have an idea this bill's going to be pretty high. Why don't you slip him a little money, just in case? I wouldn't want to embarrass him in front of Nancy. He said he'd pay the check. He probably has enough money. Well, it'll be easy enough to find out. Well, how? When you're dancing. Well, frankly, I don't figure on dancing with David tonight. <laughs> no, I mean, you can ask Nancy to dance, and then I can find out from David. All right, I can't ask Nancy to dance. Young girl like that doesn't want to dance with her date's father. Well, I don't know why not. I enjoy dancing with you. Well, you're not a young girl. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're, you know, I... Well, I, it'd just be embarrassing to ask Nancy to dance with me. I wouldn't know how to go about asking her. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, David. Now, if you don't ask me to dance, Mr. Nelson, I'm going to develop an awful inferiority complex. Oh. <laughs> you hear that, Harriet? I'm not as old as I look. Or uh, as I feel, or, or something. Oh, Mom, would you care to dance? Oh, I'd love to, dear, in just a few minutes, but there's a question I want to ask you first. Your dad and I were wondering, are you sure you have enough money to pay this check? Well, to tell you the truth, Mom, I'm getting everything for half price. See, it's a special deal. What do you mean? Well, they're trying to attract some of the college crowd, and so I'm supposed to do a write-up on the restaurant for the school paper. In exchange, I get a 50% discount. Well, is that legal? Oh, sure, they requested it, and it was arranged through the dean's office. That's why I wanted the menu. Oh, well, that sounds like a wonderful deal. Yeah, I think so. It's getting kind of late, isn't it? Uh, Captain, may we have the check, please? Here you are, sir. Oh, thank you. Oh, uh, would you tell Mr. Williamson that I'm the young man from the school paper? He was arranging a discount on the check. Mr. Williamson? Uh, yes, sir, the manager. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Mr. Williamson is not the manager. The manager is Mr. Townsend, Mr. Guthrie Townsend. Oh, well, is that a new manager? Uh, no, sir. He's been with us since we opened. Oh, I, I thought Mr. Williamson was the manager. Oh, I know whom you mean, sir. Uh, Mr. Williamson is manager of the Zebra Room. The zebra Room? Zephyr Room? Holy smokes, I must have gotten the names mixed up. <laughs> I'm just leaving the check and we'll pay it later. Very good, madam. Gee, this is embarrassing. I don't have enough money for the whole check. Well, don't worry about it, dear. Your father has some money with him. I'll tell you what. You and he fight over the check, and you let him win. I thought it was too good to be true. You know, I was acting like such a big man. Well, don't worry about it, dear. How am I going to tell Pop? I don't want Nancy to find out. She'll think I'm a dope. Well, I'll dance with him, and I'll explain what happened. Thank you very much. Oh, it was a pleasure, Mr. Nelson. You're really a good dancer. Oh, well, thanks a lot. I'm not in very good shape right now. I think I'll sit this one out. You know, the nice thing about being with your wife is if you don't feel like dancing, you don't have to. Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> Come on, I want to dance again. Oh. <laughs> uh, Harriet. Your father's really a wonderful dancer. Oh, thank you. Gee, I'm so glad you asked me. I don't know when I've had so much fun. Oh, that's well. Thank you. 
Harriet, I love to dance with you, but I'm about ready to cave in. Well, I had to get you away from the table. I had to talk to you. Is something wrong? We've got a problem. David was supposed to get a 50% discount on the check here tonight for writing an article about the zebra room for the school paper. The zebra room? This is the Zephyr room. That's our problem. Oh. He hasn't got enough money to cover the check. Well, we'll go back to the table and I'll let him have some money. No, no, Nancy will find out and David's embarrassed enough. Well, how will I get the money to him? Well, I've talked that over with David. Now, when we get back to the table, you make a grab for the check. And he'll try and get away from you, but you make sure you win. Well, okay. Well, thank you very much, dear. That was most enjoyable. Well, thank you. I enjoyed it, too. I think I'll pay the check now, if you don't mind, Dave. Oh, no, no, Pop. The treat's on me, remember? Dave, please. Well, all right, but it's on me the next time. <laughs> you want some? Oh, uh, may we have some more coffee, please? I just poured it, sir. Oh, oh, yes. Uh... Well, uh, suppose we have uh, refills on the water. Sure. <laughs> oh. There goes the band again. Well, come on, dear, let's dance. Oh, Ozzy, I'm so tired. Oh, no, come on, please. Oh, really, dear, I... Gee, your father sure likes to dance, doesn't he? <laughs> He's very athletic. Hey, wait a minute. Where are you going? The dance floor's over there. I don't want to dance. I just want to talk to you. Something the matter? Yes. I don't have any money with me. I must have left my money in my other pants when I changed my suit. Can I borrow some of your money? Well, I haven't got any money with me. You told me to leave it at home. After all these years, it's a fine time to start listening to what I tell you to do. <laughs> awful. Can't you cash a check? I don't have my wallet. I don't have any identification. Yeah, I could phone Ricky to bring some money over here. He's listening to the records at home with the boys. Oh, well, now, that's a sensible idea. I'll go back to the table. Oh, look, uh, don't order any more refills on the coffee. It's 50 cents a cup. <laughs> Is something the matter, David? And why do you ask? Well, you're acting sort of funny all of a sudden. Well, I might as well tell you. You know that deal I told you about with the school paper? Yes, I think it's wonderful. Only one thing. We came to the wrong place. Well, this is the Zephyr Room, isn't it? Yeah, that's the trouble. The deal was with the Zebra Room. I don't have enough money to pay for the check. Mm -hmm. Well, I've got a dollar and a half. <laughs> that wouldn't help much. Well, I thought your father insisted on paying for the check. Well, he did, but I don't think that's fair. I got us into this mess, and it's my responsibility. A oh, waiter. What are you going to do? Oh, uh, pardon me, miss. Uh, yes, sir. Some cigarettes or a cigar? Uh, no. Uh... Well, how about one of our little pandas? Aren't they cute and cuddly? Oh, uh, yes, they are. Uh, this is very embarrassing. I have an important phone call to make, and I don't seem to have any change with me. Uh, I wonder if I could borrow a dime from you. Uh, we're having dinner right in there. You could put it on our check. Thank you. You fellows are all alike. <laughs> Good evening. I'm Mr. Townsend, the manager. The waiter said you wanted to see me. Oh, yes, sir. Won't you sit down? Oh, yes, of course. Wanted to talk to you about our check. Oh, that won't be necessary, dear. Your father's taking care of everything. He's making a phone call right now. No, Mom, I can't let Pop go through life taking care of things for me. It's my fault, and I'll handle everything. Isn't he wonderful? Y you see, sir, I'm a reporter from the college newspaper. But, operator, I've dialed the number three times. There's got to be an answer there. It's my house, and I know somebody's home. <laughs> Be sure and, and send my dime back, will you? Uh, I, I had quite a job borrowing it. <laughs> and the zebra room said they'd give you a discount on the dinner. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, their publicity man worked it out with the editor of our paper. With the dean's permission, of course. Hello? Is this the Randolph's house? Oh, what are you doing up so late, you little rascal? No, oh, I, I'm sorry, honey. David writes great articles. Show much more on the back of the menu, David. Just jotted down a few things here. Oh, 
Yeah, now, could I speak to Daddy? You go get him, will you? No, no, don't hang up, honey. Honey, don't hang... Hello? <laughs> well, I'm glad you like it. <laughs> oh, this part about the crepe Suzette is wonderful. <laughs> well, it might be a little commercial. Oh, no, 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 it's perfect. <laughs> what did he say? He says, man, wait till you dig those crazy flaming pancakes. <laughs> well, evidently Ricky went out. Nobody's home. Oh, Pop, this is the manager, Mr. Townsend. This is my father. Oh, it's a pleasure, Mr. Nelson. Oh, I'm very glad to know you. Uh, could I speak to you in your private office for a moment, please? You mean about the check? Uh, yes. Uh, I have a, a watch here. I, I could leave a security. Or, or I could leave Mrs. Nelson with you while I go home and get some money. <laughs> Nelson, that won't be at all necessary. Everything's been arranged very satisfactorily. Besides, you can't get rid of me that easily. <laughs> well, uh, uh, I don't want you to think we're dead beats. Uh, I'd love to have an opportunity to pay the bill. Please, Mr. Nelson, I insist that you be my guest for this evening. Your son David's written a wonderful article about us, and he's going to run it in the school paper. After all, we can't let the zebra room get ahead of us. Oh, <laughs> How about that? Mr. Townsend is setting aside one night a week as college night. You know, we'll uh, cut the prices way down so the kids can afford it. Oh, gee, that sounds great. Well, thank you. Well, it's been very nice meeting you folks, and I do hope you'll come in again sometime. Well, thank you very much. Yes, sir, thanks a lot. Not at all. My pleasure. Good night. Gee. How about this? Well, dear, shall we dance? I'd love to. Well, dear, shall we dance? I'd love to. <laughs> oh, Joseph. Yes, Mr. Tom. I think I'll have a little something to eat. Suppose you bring me some of those crazy flaming pancakes. I beg your pardon, sir? Crepe Suzette. Oh, yes, of course. Come on, Joe. Let's get hep to the jive around here, man. <laughs> Here's how you can relive a good time over and over again. See it, big as life in full color slides. The newest, smartest way to take color slides is with a stylish Kodak Signet 40 camera. You'll wear it proudly everywhere you go. Just aim, focus, snap. It's as easy as that. Exciting action shots, eye-catching close-ups, Beautiful scenes, indoors or out, day or night. You can take them all in rich, beautiful color. The Kodak Signet 40 is the smartest color slide camera you can buy, yet it costs only $74 or as little as $750 down. Other fine Kodak color slide cameras range in price from $3150 to $175. Ask your dealer about easy terms, and remember, when your camera is made by Kodak, you know it's good. for the color cover and interesting personality story on Rick Nelson in the current issue of Teen Magazine. It tells the story of how after nine years as a television and radio star, Rick started singing and scored a smash hit with his first record. We think you'll like it. are brought to you by the Eastman Kodak Company, who remind you that the name Kodak on your camera or film is your guarantee of quality. If it's made by Kodak, you know it's good. This has been an ABC Television Network film presentation. <laughs>